So what kind of access challenges might there be? Uh, physical differences, sensory, cognitive, learning differences, uh, attention differences, communication differences, and then socioeconomic status, race, cultural, gender differences, including different languages. So we're trying to look at the whole gamut of diversity when we think about universal design. And then we apply it to different things. We can have universal design instruction, of technology, of student services, of work sites, of projects, of physical spaces that we're talking about today. And there's a lot of pioneering work that has led in this direction. I'm just going to highlight a few things. But what, what brought us here? Why are we thinking like this at this time? At this time? Um, Mark Harrison was one, professor and industrial engineer. Um, and he had a brain injury as a young child, had a lot of physical therapy. Uh, he worked for the Rhode Island School for the Design. And his work led to the Universal Kitchen Project. And this was like, from my understanding, hundreds of students were involved in this, in designing kitchens that were efficient, usable, accessible to people with a wide range of, of abilities. And so we thought, why are we just designing kitchens for the average uh, female, middle-aged homemaker? Uh, and there are a lot of other people that might use that kitchen, including children, wheelchair users, elderly. So he did a lot of work in that area. Ron Mace is another one, ar ar architect, pro uh, product designer. Uh, he defined universal design and helped de develop some of the first building codes uh, for accessibility. And he's the one who established the Center for Universal Design at uh, North Carolina State University, originally called the Center for Accessible Housing. So they have focused a lot on the physical environment, uh, but also commercial products. And that center did, created seven principles of universal design, uh, which we can apply to any product or any environment. But there were some other movements that I'll just mention briefly, but the Barrier Free Movement, um, the veterans of World War II um, were a big motivation. They came back home, many of them had injuries, uh, they survived, and so there were a lot more of them that had injuries that we never experienced in a war. Um, they had the GI Bill, so they showed up on our post-secondary campus doors. Uh, parents of kids with disabilities started advocating for their children, wanting them to be in regular education. And then the Civil Rights Movement uh, also benefited people with disabilities in their promotion of barrier-free um, environment. Patricia Moore uh, did an interesting thing. She's an industrial engineer and gerontologist, and she disguised herself, um, a lab disguise, as an elderly woman. And then she just wandered around various places and whatever, and, and just kept a journal on how she was treated, uh, differently because of her uh, age, uh, but also where the barriers were, uh, because her sight was reduced, uh, her hearing wasn't perfect, uh, she had some mobility issues, and she wrote a book about it, and there was a wide distribution of it, and so it, uh, it increased awareness of many people. And then us baby boomers, of course, we just kind of, wherever we go, we change things, a uh, large group of us, and we are all, all of a sudden, we're starting to demand some accessible products and environments, and we don't want them necessarily to be laid with disability issues. We just say, hey, no, we just want access. We just want to be able to do this. We've done this before. We want to do it now. And of course, there's legislation, and this is like the Americans with Disabilities Act, and we're not talking today about legislation, but there are a lot of laws and lists of requirements and so forth that you can look at, too. I was poking around the internet just this last week and uh, preparing for this talk, actually, and was trying to find an example, a kind of attitudinal cartoon or something, and I was trying to find something that wasn't uh, too politically incorrect. So I ran into this quote of block. I broke my leg a month ago, and now some people act completely different towards me, just because I'm in a wheelchair. It's not like I'm going to have permanent damage, but it really helps to know, you to know who your friend, your real friends are. And uh, they didn't elaborate this on, on this anymore, but um, there are simulations that you sometimes hear about for people to become more sensitive to uh, the issues faced by people who use wheelchairs in this particular case. I, I don't really like those simulations too much the way they're usually presented. Uh, because you sometimes can be left thinking, oh man, this is really hard, I'd never be able to get around. Where if you really use that wheelchair every day, you, you'd learn how to do that. But, but what I like, is that there was a simulation I read about one time where a person used a wheelchair, but the exercise wasn't for them to be feel, figuring out what it was like to use a wheelchair. The exercise was the other students were supposed to watch and record how people treated this other student in the wheelchair. And then you see a real learning experience. But a lot of Physical barriers look like physical barriers. Other barriers are really more attitudinal at their at their uh, at their core. Back to 
universal design. Um, you know, it's kind of a fuzzy, a fuzzy thing. Most things are not fully universal design, so it's kind of a continuum. But I think one of the things that I would like as an outcome for you today is you will know it if you see it. Uh, if you see something that's universal design. I looked at this picture. It was out there on the internet of this guy in a wheelchair in a skateboard park. And I immediately thought universal design just because I'm always thinking about universal design. I don't know what they did at this place. I don't know anything about it, really. I've never skateboarded, and I've never skateboarded at, a, at Cement Park. But whether they thought about it intentionally, or it just sort of happened, as things can, that facility, that place, was accessible to this person who was using a wheelchair. 